Good morning and welcome to St. James. We're glad you're here this morning. We hope that many of you have power restored or a generator, but uh, certainly uh, one of the things that we do as a church is we take care of one another. So if anybody does have uh, any needs or knows of anybody who has needs related to the, the storm damage, please let us know so that we might be able to help. Uh, also, I direct your attention to, uh, to the announcements. Uh, just two that I want to uh, bring to your attention. One, uh, our Lenten family night. We have our third Lenten family night, and whether you made it to the first or second, you're invited tonight. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock with a meal. We all gather for a meal, and it was beautiful to see uh, all of the folks gathered last week with the, with the two youth groups. Uh, and then after that, we'll have a brief worship, and then we'll begin our uh, adult formation, and there'll be activities for, uh, for children as well. Um, and it centers around Brian McLaren's video series and then a chance to dialogue. You don't have to do any pro uh, prepared learning or study before. You just come as you are, uh, and, and it'll help uh, as you work your way through this Lenten journey. Uh, also, uh, on the back, I invite you to go to the back. Uh, you'll see this week we are having our annual uh, blood drive. Uh, we need volunteers both uh, willing to give blood uh, and those that are willing to help out. Uh, so you can see all the instructions about how to sign up uh, on the back. Um, and then I will just invite you to look at the two inserts, one being the opportunity to give uh, lilies this Easter. It's hard to believe we're already talking about Easter um, in memory or in celebration of someone in your life or to the glory of God, but a chance for you to uh, be part of the beautif beautifying church uh, for Easter Sunday. Uh, and then the other, uh, we weren't able, uh, with all the transitions, to approve our budget in advance of the annual meeting. I keep turning it upside down again. Um, in advance of the annual meeting, but we wanted you to uh, just get a sense of the budget that we did approve, so you can look over that uh, at your leisure. So thank you. Let's take a deep moment as we gather ourselves for worship. And please stand. And this, if the Sunday school students can make their way to the door, uh, your teachers will take you to your class.
the Lord who forgives all our sin. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Six days 
sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. All the statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired than are they than gold more than 
In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Well, we're sort of halfway through Lent, the first Sunday of Lent, and as you know, throughout the year we have this journey, this journey throughout the year of uh, the critical and, and ministry observations of our and proclamations of our faith in Jesus Christ. And during, during those four, these forty days of Lent, um, it's really a journey in the wilderness. That's the symbol, that's the image we have. Because it's a time when we're encouraged to look honestly at ourselves, to take stock of where we are in that journey, um, uh, to ask for forgiveness, to confess our sins, to ask for forgiveness, to, to repent. Basically, it's a time to make changes. And we can do this any time during the year, but specifically during Lent, we're encouraged to identify and make changes in our spiritual journey that we think are important. I hope you have been doing that. And guess what? You've got some more time to work on this film. <laughs> and it's important. It is important for us to know how things are going in our life with Christ. It's important to say, you know what, I think I could do this better. I think God could be I could be more open to God. It's important to open ourselves up to be transformed by the love of Jesus Christ throughout the year, but really during the time to think about that and to pray about that. Well, it just so happens the gospel for the day is talking about the very thing. And this time when Jesus goes into the temple and cleanses it, it it's a story that's in all four gospels. Uh, in John, the gospel according to John, it's a little bit different. It's really more about love. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's really more about justice. We're going to talk about love today. And that's why, that's why during this season of Lent, the opening, one of the opening sentences uh, in penitential order is the one about love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Where are we with this thing about? And it takes time of transformation. That's that key word that applies to the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus, because uh, his message basically is, folks, it's time for transformation. You're in the temple. It's a place of worship. It always was. It always would be. Um, but animals were in there. Um, the money changers were there so, so, so that people who came to make a sacrifice Offerings to God of uh, birds were able to have the right signs, the right coinage to do that. But the whole point of the image that Jesus is painting is there's not any love going on here. There's not any real prayer going on here. So Jesus, in his anger, upsets everything and tells them to get out, to stop it. And instead, he asks them to focus on him. Temple's going to be rebuilt in three days. What do you mean three days? Well, he's talking about himself. So that's the message for us on this day. Jesus, who was the primary one to reveal to us the truth of the God that we worship. Jesus, the one who said over and over again, acted in love, said love. Your neighbor, love one another. Jesus, who set the example for our own behavior in that in that temple, was saying, "Look at me and do what I do, and act like I act. Don't worry about the sacrifices. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Focus on me." He was asking those people in the temple whether they're worshiping or not. Be transformed, be changed, be converted. <coughs> and again, that message is being sent to us through this very worship today. Well, the 
been six months, we've been um, in a formation, we've been reading Marcus Ford, Brian McLaren, um, Brian Ford, and Marcus Ford, Brian McLaren, Richard Rohr. And you know what? They've been talking about the same thing. They've been talking about the same thing. That it really seems like now is the time for those of us Christians to look at the possibility of personal transformation in our churches. And therefore, I bet they need to get more honest and passionate about their faith in Jesus. And also, corporate transformation, societal transformation. I mean, my point is this, is that it's something that's going on, and it's something that we are part of, and it's something that's speaking to us over and over again. And one of those ways that it's speaking to you over and over again is me. Because I think it's important. And one of the ways, one of the ways, one of the practices, one of the activities that we can choose to do, you know, I've said this before, but one of the practices that we can choose to do is to be very still and open to the presence of God. Call it centering prayer or listening prayer, whatever you want to call it. But I invite you again, I implore you, have an hour and make the commitment to commit 10 to 15 minutes a day to be still. There are lots of ways to do this. Basically, it's being still and quiet and listening for God. Feeling God's love. Releasing those other messages and busyness that are going on. Quality presence with the God in whom we believe. And why do I keep saying that? I mean, why do I keep lifting that up? Why do I think that's more important? Because I think that's the primary, the first way that we can really be transformed. We can also be transformed by the way we live our lives and interact with other people, the ministry we do. There's a lot of ways, but this, during our season of Lent, this is the time to be particularly spiritual. We all can do it. There is a movement through our culture, maybe even through the world, that is the movement of the Spirit that's inviting us to go deeper. And it is something that we talk about here at St. James. We ask you to get on board and see where God leads us as a parish community, see where God leads us as individuals. So the world is calling to people like us to stand up and speak to love and speak to justice and make a difference. May you this Lent feel that God of love in some new way. Let it come and enjoy it. And see how it moves you to some sort of action with others, some sort of action common good of the communities in which we live. For God through Jesus Christ is there as well. Amen. stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, the God of not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and hung on the Bible. He 
God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, the love and serve and the faithful witness Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and of peace. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.